Welcome back to the garage, guys. We're uh, finally getting to something you a lot of you have been asking about. We're finally getting to updating the rotary axis for the XL plasma cutter. In today's video, we're going to show you how to put this together and how it works. We've got the rotary axis assembled. We've got it mounted out on the plasma cutter. So we took, we're going to do this first sample project. Uh, we took a minute and we drew this up. It's uh, three tubes. We've got a shallow notch here and two other 90 and then the opposite degrees of that one. So we're going to go out. The one thing about this job is this job is sequence. So it's going to cut all three tubes at one time. We're not going to set up and do one tube and then reset up to a second tube. All three of these are going to be sequenced on the machine. So we're going to go out and get that done. We're going to show you how to load and unload a tube. It's a little little different than our other method, but we just lift up on the, uh, the bolt here. It's spring loaded, falls down, and opens up to give great access in there. So um, that's adjustable for tension. So we put it back in, move it up, and uh, we'll show you underneath how we've got a, a spring tension there. We decided to do a second job to show some of the stuff that the rotary axis can do. We've got this two inch tube and it's got these holes cut in it and they're, they're on a spiral. So as it's cutting, it's gonna roll the tube and spiral these down there. Now, in the plan package, there are some videos that show how to set up the G-code uh, using the rotary axis, using the sheet metal function. So those are in the video. Make sure you check those out in your plans. JD's Garage Rotary Axis. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Just like that. Ooh, that sucker's hot. We're working out here in the shop and it's mighty cold today. Uh, we got a water pan. Full ice. Well, to get out of the cold weather in the garage, we decided to bring these downstairs into the shop. Um, haven't done any work on these since we, we cut them. We just wanted to show the notching that we did. Um, putting that together, we get a nice, nice notch on there. It actually forms a, a better edge than a hole saw because we don't have to grind off that little lip that you get with a hole saw. It's a nice edge set up for welding. Uh, we got these three parts here. Um, we just wanted to show how they go together. Uh, we made a triangle here. And everything's clocked. Fits nice across the bottom uh, on there. So you can see it very well. It 
fits perfect on the top. So we just made that triangle with a, a 20 degree, 70 degree, and a 90 degree. So everything kind of locks together real nice. Uh, I lift that up, but this, but it just fits on here. You know, everything's perfect. I can move it back and forth, hold that. Really a good job for notching. So we're really happy with it. We didn't do it, like I said, we didn't do any cleanup. Just brought these down here. The other thing we did is we put a piece of two inch pipe in there. I just had Jackson put the uh, put the holes on a, on a spiral on there to see how it turned out. And it actually really turned out nice. I don't know what he was trying to prove with this thing on the top and I asked him why he said because it looks cool but it does it kind of kind of turns out we have no use for that we were just showing a little bit of the capability that the uh that the rotary axis could do that's two inch uh eighth inch wall jackson yeah yeah eighth inch wall so yeah i did a nice job on it uh running pretty smooth the new rotary axis we brought the rotary axis inside so we could talk about it a little bit and uh last thing we cut was this uh this two inch spiral holes. And if you see here, we uh, have the bearing set up in the middle hole for two inch. So it's kind of set up for one inch, one inch of the closest, two inch in the middle and three inch on the outside. So you do have to move those if you're going back and forth from a wide variety. Uh, the notcher will handle from one inch all the way down to, or all the way up to three inch. Jackson, did we try? Three quarters of an inch will it take three quarter of an inch it should take three quarter we've never tried it though. yeah it should take three quarter because the the bearings are a little closer than it was in the original de design for the uh uh gen 2 table so should take it um again so that's adjustable on there and we do have to move this up and down uh when we do switch from a wide range of tube from one inch to two inch we moved it up a little bit keeps this pretty much in the same spot nice and level so if we were doing three inch, we'd move it up one more notch. And as you can see, we've got a number of uh, bearing spots for it. That'll be user discretion, how often you think you need them. But we spaced them out about 16 inches on there. And one thing that's very important, they all have to be in the same plane. So what we did is we stuck a tube in and um, welded on the two outside ones and then worked our way toward the middle and got them each positioned perfectly along there. Now, make sure you got a straight tube. You know, we started going along and we, we went to roll the uh, roll the tube and it wasn't very straight. So we, we had to kind of get a new one and put a straight edge on it. Um, but anyway, make sure that all of these things, you're making very good contact. If you're a little bit off, shouldn't have any issues because your tube's not gonna be perfectly straight anyway. So. But that's how we did it. We welded on the outsides and worked our way into the middle as we went. So that's an important note. The second thing you need to be aware of is when these go on, it's very important that they go on square to the tube. If you get them at an angle and you start rolling this way, the tube's going to walk, going to try to go down that way. Same thing if you got it this way and you're rolling in this direction, the tube's gonna walk that way. So um, you gotta get these things on straight. Uh, you do have the ability to tweak them a little bit after the fact with a, with a pair of uh, crescent wrenches. Uh, uh, don't ask me how I know that. But anyway, you do have a little bit of ability, but you will have to test that uh, your tube is rolling and rolling and rolling and not walking down one way or the other. If it is, you'll have to make some little adjustments to get the tube rolling perfectly square. I've got a small stepper motor here, uh, something we use on a different project, but uh, I just wanted to mention one thing about it. So on the rotary axis, when we're roll for the tube roller portion of it, that actually unplugs the x-axis motor and the rotary axis plugs into that spot. And then you move the x-axis manually by hand so it's directly right up and down over the tube. Now, one thing that we did is we developed a little device to help lock that motor in place. So if you bump it with the tube, it shouldn't move. So if we take a look at a stepper motor, pretty easy to turn. Now on this particular motor, the black and the green are one coil. So I've got those stripped. If I just twist those together, and then if I take the blue and the red, the other coil, and twist those together, um, 
Now the stepper motor is very difficult to move. So it kind of locks that into place. So what we did is we developed, or we made a, just took one of those five pin connectors and just jumped coil A to coil B. And then when we unplug the X axis from the control box, we just take this and pop it on there and it locks that motor once we've slid it into place. Yeah, probably not necessary, but we thought it was a good idea. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. That's a look at the JD's Garage rotary axis in action. We appreciate you sticking around to the end. And make sure to like and subscribe.